talking about actually um, uh, carb cycling, right? So car <laughs> carb cycling is basically where you, uh, where essentially you have low carb days and high carb days. Now, everyone asks about what does that mean? That's going to be different for everyone. <clears throat> a low carb day for Trey could be 150 grams of carbs, right? A low carb day for me, you know, I have to be real low. <laughs> but it's good. You're talking more like 30 grams for me. Because Trey, for example, depletes a lot faster than I do. So it's low relative to you, okay? Meaning that whatever carbs you're at, you're depleted. So, um, okay, so basically, let's talk about, we're talking about it as four studies. The first study we're going to talk about, or actually concept, was your cell's fuel gauge. And um, we'll trade and go right after this study. So the cell's fuel gauge, you have a fuel gauge inside of your muscles. And that fuel gauge is called AMPK. You guys know your main energy source is ATP, um, which we depleted a lot. We're depleting a lot right now in Trey. So <laughs> when ATP is depleted, your fuel gauge gets turned on. It's called AMPK. And when that's turned on, it basically means your, your cells are depleted. It senses that the fuel gauge is low and it turns on the fuel gauge, AMPK, and from that you increase what's called mitochondria, and mitochondria burns fat. The more mitochondria you have, the more insulin sensitive you are, and the more fat you burn. So, that's the key take home message on it. What time do you have, Andy? Whenever you're ready. <clears throat> All right, so again, here we go. Trey's in his wing gates. Here we go. Let's get it, come on. Come on, Trey. Here we go, come on. There you go. Yes, yes, sir. Come on. Atta boy. Come on. Nice. Come, on. come on. Come on. Yes. Come on, Trey. Grind it out. Grind it out. Come on. Grind it. Come on. Yes, sir. You're good. Yeah. Alright. Good job. So you see, like, on that time, it was a lot harder to drop. Because he's got to get to 175 revolutions. So, the, after doing several sprints, it's hard to get up to those revolutions because your your legs are so full of blood. And so, uh, again, like this is what we're doing with Trey, this is what we do with Ben Kapolsky, we saw a generation higher. And, um, you know, that's how we do it. Uh, particularly when we're working on, on getting, like, Trey prepped for his shows. So, um, so the next concept that we sort of talked about was, so the next talk, talk we sort of talked about the next topic we sort of talked about was um, basically like what happens when you like do you actually adapt to a longer term like lower carbohydrate diet there's a real cool protocol so right now Trey's doing these intervals right um, and by the way if, if you're on Instagram or Facebook call at Trey Kid um, but basically, Trey's doing these intervals. One sprint, like one single sprint that he does, we found the lab depletes his muscle glycogen by 16%. Now, what if we were to do this protocol and deplete Trey uh, completely? So if one's like 16%, by the time we're done, he's like down to maybe 40% glycogen or carbohydrate source. And normally you'd go home and eat carbs. And that one of the studies I talked about by Yeo in 2008 Basically, they, they depleted them of carbs, and they didn't eat carbs again until their next session. So say that Trey did this in the morning, didn't eat carbs till night, and then did intervals again. The second interval session, he's in a depleted state. So basically, what that kind of means is that that means the fuel gauge is low when he's training, so it ramps up mitochondria. So basically, what that study showed is that after you did that, instead of training every day when you're in a depleted state or full state, that actually, and we'll do four this time. Yep. <clears throat> that when you're in a depleted state or you're a full state, that actually what that ends up doing is it turns on the cell's fuel gauge, you ran mitochondria, and they found that even walking, you actually were using more fat as fuel. So I think that's a really good take home message. So again, try this if you're doing, if you're prepping for a contest, you do cardio in the morning, don't eat carbs the rest of the day until night, and you do cardio again at night like this to this intensity where you should be dying and then you will actually cause more adaptations where if you were separated out every other day um so or every day 
So that's key. Um, the last I'll take on message is, what, why is, what's another reason that's happening? What happens to fatty acids? When you do your interval training and um, you train a low carb state, fatty acids are much higher. You raise adrenaline much higher and adrenaline actually goes to the cell and also tells it to increase fat burning capacity. So those are some of the long-term effects. Anything I'm missing, Andy, on some of the studies? Uh, no, that this week? Not, not on those studies, no. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna hit another wing gate here. If you guys just join us, um, again, we, with myself, Dr. Wilson, we got uh, Trey Kidd here. We are prepping Trey for, uh, to turn pro. And now we're sort of in the cutting phase, so we've added in um, uh, wing gates. So the, this is, well, he's gonna pedal, he hits 175 revolutions, that weight drops, and then he sprints all the way out. So here we go, pro stage right here, man. Bring it, pro stage. Come on, Trey, hit it. Come on, pro stage. Get it, pro stage, come on. Hit. There you go, there you go, there you go. Come on, Trey. Come on, get it. Come on, grind it out, grind here it out. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Come, come on. on. Yep. Come on. Attaboy. Good. 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 Nice. Nice work. Good for Maybe we drop more plate. If he has to get the revolutions up. We're going to do one tray because right now we're going to drop one. Kind of like a burnout set. We're going to drop one plate so he gets his revolutions up on the last one because we're trying to deplete him. On our last time we did this, literally you can see the next day how much leaner Trey is. And you can even see it in his belts, striations are coming out. So again, like we do research, but we do a live too. Um, you know, it's real cool. So, okay, so what we're gonna do now is, when Andy's done with this, let me just sum up what I said. Key take home message. We have a fuel gauge in our muscles. Fuel gauge, when, when your muscles are empty, the fuel gauge turns on. That fuel gauge is called AMPK. When that turns on, it, it increases your fat burning machinery, which is mitochondria. Interval sprints are the quickest way to do it. Like one of these sprints we found in a lab depletes his muscle glycogen by 16%. That's just like a 10 second all out sprint. If you go all out for 30 seconds, you should deplete it by close to 30%. So by the time Trey's done, he's gonna be completely depleted. You can see how taxing it is. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, guys, if you're in Tampa, Florida, you, it's the toughest thing you'll ever do. I guarantee you, I, we've made more people throw up on this device than anyone. Um, I do every day. <laughs> is that, yeah, exactly. And actually, just to let you guys know, we're working with Generation Iron guys, actually, and we're gonna be doing um, a, a whole series with Generation Iron on the science of turning pro, uh, featuring uh, Trey Kidd and, um, and also our lab. So, uh, with that, you know what? Let's go ahead and we're gonna take some questions. So, what questions we got about low carb? With keto, does overall calorie intake affect how quickly you would go into ketosis? For example, if you are 3,000 calories, 20% protein equates to 600 calories, which equals 150 grams of protein by compare. Oh, wow, that's a long question. So, I think his question is what's his name? What's his name? Uh, this one is Julian. Julian? Julian, great question. So with keto, does getting into ketosis, your overall calories affect your ability to get into ketosis? The answer is yes. Um, basically, in fact, people use intermittent fasting to get into ketosis faster. So calorie deficit will knock you into ketosis faster. So it's lack of carbohydrates, but also in general, ketosis can be simulated by lowering calories as well. So the answer is, Yes, but also it, it, it's impacted by the amount and type of fat in your diet. So when you do have uh, um, your diet and you actually have calories in your diet, higher fat ratios of fats will get your, uh, you'll be in ketosis more. Um, is Trey still an excess calorie intake on low carb day? Uh, um, yeah, not right now. So, uh, all right, next question. You got 30 seconds to the next one. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we got 30 cents. We'll take the question. I'll, I'll rapid fire it. <laughs> Is that turned off the comments? Um, on, on, uh, I think it's turned off the comments. Yeah. Why cycle carbs on a ketogenic diet? <laughs> What's up, Cameron? What's up? Why cycle carbs on a ketogenic diet? 
Well, on a ketogenic diet, you don't need to cycle carbs. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I mean, sometimes people will use carbs, um, but you should do that targeted. So it's kind of the reverse. Um, all right, we're going to hit up our last sprint here. Last one, Trey. Come on. Come on, let's shut. Yeah, gonna, gonna here we go. Here we go. Last one. Last one. Last one. Let me be ready. Yep. Come on, Trey. Come on. Last one. Ride it out. Ride it out. Come on. Get it. Come on. There you go, there you go. Come there on, go. come on, come on, come on. Come on. Here we go, Trey. Come on. Get. Come on. We're gonna stretch that. Here we go, Trey. Get it. Come on. Keep oh. riding, keep riding, keep riding, keep riding. Come on. Come on. Get it. You're done. You're done. Got it. Alright. Good job. Nice. There you go. Alright, so we're gonna you guys tuning in. We're on uh, Periscope and Facebook Live. Um so someone goes, I would like to take whey protein on low carb days as it doesn't have much carbs. That's fine, go ahead. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, next question. Let me go ahead and see this on the Facebook blush. <clears throat> Were participants in the HIT study you posted yesterday already fat adapted? No, they weren't. Country, you wanna read it? Over there. Um, so the answer was on the study I posted, the basically the people who were um, were uh, having higher amounts of fat and fat oxidation, they did not start off fat adapted. They started off carb adapted. And in fact, they were eating carbs just like the other people. The difference was that they would essentially train every other session in a depleted state and then have their carbs after the session. Right. Um, what about for fem? So go go ahead with the next question. Does this training create more mitochondria than endurance training? This type of training here, uh, this type of training here, can create as much mitochondria as very long duration uh, um, um, endurance training, and per minute, per second, more. Uh, protein to zero carb on rest days is there a time frame to switch from high carbs to zero carbs or switching so quickly from using fat as fuel be carbs as fuel um, does cardio acceleration man so fast does cardio acceleration during workout count the same as hit cardio sessions after workout okay so someone's asking about yeah this some of them short so someone's asking about cardio acceleration training that's basically, like Jim Safani's a big fan of that. And basically what that means is like, you're doing weights and in between you're kind of doing things like jumping jacks or um, things elevating your heart rate. Yeah, that could serve as a hit training session, especially if the intensity is high. I'm gonna take one, I'm also looking on the uh, periscope. I think a good one is um, if they don't have a wind gate at home, what can they use instead of in place of a wind gate? Okay, That's so a good question. If you question. don't have a wind gate at home, what do you do? <clears throat> what we would recommend is this. So you notice that I get on this wind gate bike, right? So I'm on this bike, and you have you have this machine here, and there's no weight like on the flywheel. But when I hit 175 revolutions, that weight drops. What you do is if you get on a spin bike and you spin all the way out with no resistance. You pedal all the way out for like five seconds and your partner cranks up the resistance while you're in full stride. Then you pedal all out for 10 to 30 seconds and that will do it. Let's go ahead and take about two more questions. What do you do when you hit a fat loss plateau with lowest possible calories you can go? Increase calories back up? Okay, when you hit a, when you hit a fat loss plateau, you need to assess a lot of things. Um, but one of those things, if you can't lower your calories anymore, calorie cycling is going to be very important. So that's where, yeah, absolutely. You're probably going to need to go up to maintenance for a while, recover your metabolism, and then when you go back into dieting, you probably should cycle your calories. In other words, don't just keep lowering your calories. What we talked about last week was cycling your calories. So that means like you can avoid plateauing if every five days you're raising your calories back up to maintenance. So try and avoid that by calorie cycling. Question we got was, do you still do hit on a bulk to maintain insulin sensitivity? Do you still do hit on a bulk to maintain insulin sensitivity? The answer is absolutely. So 
here's the thing. One of the problems with bulking, just like cutting, is that if you bulk for a long period of time, you're literally gonna, you're going to become insulin resistant because your calories get so high and you never turn on that fuel gauge. So you, you don't, it, your mitochondria is not as high, you're not as insulin sensitive, and that's when you stop getting pumps and you start getting very fat. Um, someone goes, you periodize low carbs? Yes, you should periodize low carbs, okay? One last question. Uh, do you need to keep spinning your legs during the rest period? Why or why not? <clears throat> spinning your legs in between rest periods is called active recovery. For performance, it's better. Um, so I think if you're, especially like on this, when you're just trying to get that, your revolutions up, I think it's a good idea doing that one. So, guys. I love